this year, DreamWorks uh, Animation uh, is releasing two original movies, uh, the, uh, Mr. Uh, Peabody Body. and Sherman and uh, Home. Yes. And you've got one sequel, yes. the uh, How to right. Train Your Dragon 2. Our sequels are a financial necessity. And could you elaborate on the risk and rewards of sequels versus originals? We don't look at it uh, from the uh, risk-reward uh, uh, analysis that you're suggesting. Our sequels have existed because every one of these movies had multiple chapters that our filmmakers and producers and storytellers wanted to do from the day they started. How to Train Your Dragon, Dean Dubois and Chris Sanders day one walked in here and said to us there are three if not four chapters to this story. By the way it's based on a book by Cressida Cowell, English author. She's actually written 11 books and so we've always looked at this as something, a story that was going to be told over many chapters over many years. And I don't think you'd ask that same question of Lord of the Rings. You would say, well, of course, there's three chapters to, yeah. to that. That book is just, you know, huge. And it, that's what it took Peter Jackson to tell that story. And, you know, and that same uh, uh, drive from a filmmaker, from storyteller, is what has, mm -hmm. you know, had dragons. It's not like James Bond. You know, James Bond is there's a formula. and every two years or so they recreate the formula and they do elements that are new and exciting and interesting and introduce some new characters, take some old characters out, find a new villain in it, <clears throat> and it's genius. Sequels have much greater certainty about them. They are less risky um, and, you know, have tended to get bigger each time and so they are successful in this. That's the good news, because new movies are risky. And when you take risk and you do things that are unique and original, sometimes they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. And we've had that. You know, we've had recently where we've done some movies that were very ambitious, you know, The Guardians, you know, uh, Turbo. These are films that, you know, we tried to do something different and unique and they didn't work and we lost some money on them. And it's, well, the reason we can do it is because we also have, you know, these great franchises that um, have much more certainty to them. I want to take you back to 1991. You were behind the Disney animation uh, hit Aladdin, uh, which angered some Arab Americans here because they felt uh, it portrayed them negatively. But since then, you promised to consult with them, and you fulfilled your promise. And in fact, some scenes in, Dream, in DreamWorks, The Prince of Egypt, was, uh, were inspired from Quranic verses. Um, how do you avoid controversy? And what do you do? And how do you achieve that? You know, I don't think it's about avoiding controversy. I think it's actually being about respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, respectful to people's values, respecting, respectful to people's beliefs. You know, those are, those are the, some of the most important things in life for, for human beings and to not, to be insensitive about it, um, uh, I, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't think is, it's just not a way I like to live my life and it's not the way we run our company. Our intentions were always good. There were never any intentions to step on somebody's toes, to step on somebody's values, to step on somebody's belief. And, you know, that was just a great life lesson to say, you know, maybe you need to, you need to keep your eyes and ears open mm -hmm. to know uh, when you're treading in places that, you know, you inadvertently might do that. So when we made The Prince of Egypt, which is, you know, you know the story of Moses is a common story that is shared by three of the four biggest faith groups on this planet. Day one, we just said our intentions are to do an inspirational story for everybody. 
because that story is important in the Bible, it's important in the Quran, it's important in the Torah. It exists and is owned by many people in many faiths. And so we made a huge effort to make sure we didn't inadvertently do something that was not our intention. You delve into history, science, religion, social issues, um, which is too smart for kids. Um, weren't you concerned that you may lose your young generation audience in order to appeal to adults when you made that decision? I don't know. You know, it's a balance. You know, DreamWorks is a bit more of an adult brand than Disney, and that makes some people very happy. It makes some people really uncomfortable <laughs> in this. But, you know, we've been that way pretty much from the beginning with Prince of Egypt and Ants and, you know, Chicken Run and certainly Shrek, you know. We have been a PG animated movie company, not a G rated. That is among the things that differentiates us from uh, Disney. Technology has changed the way we make movies and watch movies. And um, although it enabled you to tell stories on a bigger scale, uh, these days kids are increasingly watching movies on handheld devices. And um, pirated copies of the movies are readily available on the internet. How is technology helping or hurting uh, the movie business? Well, I, I guess you sort of, I would have to divide that into two camps. The first camp I would start with is, is you know, the tools for making movies, um, what the innovation that has occurred uh, and continues to occur is breathtaking. And I can't wait for people to see How to Train Your Dragon because as I mentioned to you earlier, we actually have the newest, most state-of-the-art and mind-blowingly incredible technology that we are able to put in the hands of our animators. And they were able to do things on this movie that they were never able to do before. And it will be visibly clear to the audience. They actually will be able to see just a whole new level and quality of acting and emotions on our characters and on their faces and their expressions and it. it's, it's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. So innovation from a technology filmmaking standpoint uh, is of the essence to us and we consider ourselves a storytelling company first and foremost, but honestly a technology company in partnership with it. Technology, you know, is our paintbrush. Mm -hmm. uh, from a distribution standpoint, uh, you know, technology is, you know, creating a, a set of changes that, you know, were unimaginable maybe only five years ago, and yet it's just been transformative in terms of accessibility and uh, uh, habits and, you know, if you're in a home with children, you, you know that today they actually don't even look at the television set they're watching on their phone or on their tablets in this. It's an amazing transformation. Well, that's, that is not only a challenge, but it's also a big opportunity. And yes, we have to deal with piracy as a part of that opportunity. Um, you know, these are the things that are, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, it's not just good that comes with it, but there are those um, uh, problems that we have to solve for in it. But technology is our friend, and technology has, um, allowed Hollywood uh, and filmmakers on both the making of and the finding value of to thrive now over many decades and continues to today. Jeffrey, thank you very much. Thank you.